Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Waffle Hammer and for today's 40k lore video we're going to be taking a look at the Imperium of Man. Why the Imperium of Man you may ask? Why not Chaos or one of the alien races? Well simply put, humans as a whole and their history make up a large chunk of Warhammer 40,000's lore. They are the dominant power just barely, and their empire essentially is the 40k setting. The Imperium of Man is a colossal stellar civilization made up of millions of inhabited worlds with trillions upon trillions of human subjects within its domain. Okay, not sounding too bad, right? Wrong. The Imperium is a totalitarian, dictatorial regime informed by the extremist religious worship of the God Emperor. What? Frank Herbert's Dune? Never heard of it. For the average citizen, life in the Imperium is very grim. You must work yourself to death in the name of the God Emperor and be happy about it. Otherwise you are a heretic and deserve death. You may be conscripted to go fight and die on many hundreds of simultaneous war fronts. And you must be happy about this glorious opportunity for death in the Emperor's name. Otherwise you are a heretic and deserve death. You may live on a planet with different gravity or a polluted atmosphere and so have evolved to survive over the millennia, diverging from the glorious human form. And this makes you a mutant and you deserve death. Or worse still, you may develop into a psyker and the black ships may come for you. If you encounter aliens, then, as humanity is the only holy form and the stars are our rightful domain, then you must battle them, as they are foul abominations and, you guessed it, deserve death. The Imperium is vast, but thinly spread. Space is three-dimensional after all, and many inhabited planets are many thousands of light years apart, and so the only way to travel across these distances is, you know, just a casual trip through a hell dimension known as the Warp. The Warp, also known as the Empyrean, is another dimension of raw potential energy, and is described like an ocean. The warp has tides and eddies, safe travel corridors and colossal storms and is ludicrously dangerous. Not to mention the fact it isn't empty. Oh no, there are a host of diverse warp creatures watching, waiting, hungering for a lost ship, losing power, waiting to consume your soul and possess your body. So, you know, a little more stressful than the usual trip. The warp is a boon as well as a curse. Over the centuries, the human mutation known as a psyker has become more and more common. So much so that it is theorized that psychers may well be the next stage of human evolution. Psychers draw energy from the warp and with it can essentially do space magic. Anything from telekinesis to tearing open dimensional gates to smiting enemies with mind bullets. But a psyker's soul burns brightly in the warp and draws all manner of creatures and demons to him. An untrained psyker is an open gateway through which demons may pour and so the Imperium must hunt down and capture psychers to be taken to Terra to be assessed, with a vast amount never returning. Some, however, do and become sanctioned psychers, and have been trained and have had cybernetic augmentation to steal their minds against the perils of the warp. An Imperial planet must pay a tithe for the protection of the Holy Emperor and his fleets and armies. And no, you can't opt out. The governor of a planet must see to it that their planet has sufficient defences and an army, 
must round up all newly emergent psychers and a significant chunk of that planet's main resource, as well as a relative proportion of their population to found fighting regiments of Imperial Guard to go fight and die on an alien world they've never heard of. The tithed psychers, meanwhile, are taken to terror by the dreaded black ships, whose only concern is getting all psychers to terror for assessment. There are specialist psychers, the navigators who are a designed mutation who can navigate the warp, and astropaths are the only way to send messages across the galaxy by essentially doing the psychic version of shouting at a distant person with a bullhorn. The Imperium is vastly inefficient, a labyrinthian bureaucracy and even an important strategically placed resource rich planet can simply fall through the cracks, pay all tithes on time and be forgotten, left alone amongst the stars continuing to offer up the tithe to the strangers from beyond for centuries, forgetting why they even do so, their cries for help or for reinforcements going unheard as deadly aliens or demons come sniffing the scent of weakness. In the Imperium, all scientific advancement is heresy, as all technology is overseen by the Adeptus Mechanicus, and they believe technology is already in its perfect state, that artificial intelligence is evil and commune with machine spirits and the machine god, the Omnissiah. They were around before the Imperium and are now an autonomous Imperial institution. Many powerful figures, particularly in the church, hate this fact, but can't do anything about it as the Adeptus Mechanicus make and maintain all technology and own entire forge worlds to produce weapons and equipment and service and commission the titan god machines and imperial starships but they don't invent they don't even actively understand how their own technology works with things like the litany of activation saying light the holy incense to placate the machine spirit then, using the holy hammer, strike the chassis thrice to raise the machine spirit to activation. Essentially, hit it with a hammer till it works. Unsurprisingly, more has been forgotten than will ever be learned, and only by finding lost, standard template constructs from before the dark age of technology is any technology regained. And so this is the setting. Allow me to quote. It is the 41st millennium. For more than a hundred centuries, the emperor has sat immobile on the golden throne of earth. He is the master of mankind by the will of the gods and master of a million worlds by the might of his inexhaustible armies. He is a rotting carcass writhing invisibly with power from the dark age of technology. He is the carrion lord of the Imperium for whom a thousand souls are sacrificed every day so that he may never truly die. Yet even in his deathless state, the Emperor continues his eternal vigilance. Mighty battle fleets cross the demon infested miasma of the warp, the only route between distant stars, their way lit by the Astronomicon, the psychic manifestation of the Emperor's will. Vast armies give battle in his name on uncounted worlds. Greatest amongst his soldiers are the Adeptus Astartes, the Space Marines, bioengineered super warriors. Their comrades in arms are Legion, the Imperial Guard, and countless planetary defense forces. The ever vigilant Inquisition and the tech priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus, to name only a few. But for all their multitudes, they are barely enough to hold off the ever-present threat from aliens, heretics, mutants, and worse. To be a man in such times is to be one amongst untold billions. It is to live in the cruelest and most bloody regime imaginable. These are the tales of those times. 
Forget the power of technology and science, for so much has been forgotten, never to be relearned. Forget the promise of progress and understanding, for in the grim dark future there is only war. There is no peace amongst the stars, only an eternity of carnage and slaughter and the laughter of thirsty gods. Grim indeed, but how did it get so bad? Surely to become a spacefaring race in the first place, you can't be so technologically backed. Well, that's a good question. Smash cut back 10,000 years to the 31st millennium and the ending of the Age of Strife. During this age, humans have already been scattered throughout the stars, but the warp has been in turmoil. Cutting human planets off from one another and demonic incursions and psychers appearing in droves had been the norm. But now the warp is quieting down and humanity can get back on its feet. Enter the Emperor. Yeah, the same God Emperor from before, except now, right now, he's a mortal dude, and he's one mysterious cat. He just kind of pops up out of nowhere, which is in itself an impressive feat, seeing as he's, you know, 10 foot tall and often depicted in golden armor with a bloody halo and carrying a flaming sword. He's also a colossally powerful Psyker, the most powerful in the setting. Seriously, he forms the Astra Telepathica, the Astropaths, and creates the Astronomicon, a psychic beacon on Earth that gives navigators a frame of reference when piloting a ship. This beacon he maintains through sheer will. He's also a dab hand at genetic engineering, creating the Thunder Warriors. Powerful shock troops, but flawed, prone to all manner of genetic abnormalities from psychosis to sudden death. Nonetheless, they help him win the unification wars on Terra and take over the planet, before he promptly backstabs them all, destroying them and wiping the slate clean in preparation for launching his Great Crusade and the Primarch Project. The Emperor wants to set off into the galaxy and unite the human race as one in the Imperium of Man and creates 20 Primarchs from his own, let's be honest, overpowered genetic template. Mysteriously, two of these Primarchs, the 2nd and the 11th, are purged from Imperial record, but the other 18 are to become the Emperor's sons they are to lead his armies and to find and conquer human worlds and wipe out all aliens they encounter. Before this can happen, the Chaos Gods, somehow, open a warp portal and scatter the infant Primarchs across the galaxy. So the Emperor takes a little of the leftover gene juice from the Primarch project and creates the Space Marines a legion of them for every Primarch, and they inherit that particular Primarch's traits and propensities. And so, briefly stopping off to convince the Tech Priests of Mars that he is their god of technology, that he is their god, the Omnissiah, and I mean, he must have rolled a critical 20 for his charisma check there, Jesus. He jets off with his grandkids, the Space Marines, to start the Great Crusade, finding the scattered Primarchs as he goes, reuniting them with their legions. As the Great Crusade wears on, the 17th Primarch, Morgar, and his 17th legion, the Word Bearers, start to worship the Emperor as a god and build great monuments to him and teach conquered worlds the same. And this is a problem, as the Emperor is forming the Imperium around the Imperial Truth, which is an atheistic, rationalist, scientific truth, teaching that religion is bollocks and science is key. Because he was aware of the Chaos Gods, though he'd more likely call them powerful warp entities, see, emotions are reflected as energy in the warp, and so the most powerful warp creatures 
can feed upon that energy, feed upon worship, and so essentially become gods. And so the emperor seeks to starve them with, of this power and so destroy them. And yes, this is the same emperor that will himself be worshipped as a god in the 41st millennium against his will for a better, more enlightened human race. Grim indeed. Lorgar and his word bearers were eventually censured by the emperor for this and forced to kneel and recant in the dust of a destroyed city that they raised in the emperor's name. And the great crusade rolled on and eventually the emperor named the primarch Horus, his favorite son, as the war master in charge of all military assets of the burgeoning Imperium, and the Emperor retires to Terra to work on a top secret project. Unbeknownst to all, Lorgar and his legion had found the gods they were searching for. If the Emperor didn't want their worship, then there were those who did. The Primordial Annihilator, the Ruinous Powers, the Chaos Gods. They had corrupted Lorgar and his legion and set them to bringing more Primarchs and legions under their sway and engineering the ideal circumstances to manipulate the Warmaster Horus over decades. Corrupt him too. Horus leads half of the Primarchs and their legions in a short-lived, brutal civil war and along with his traitor elements of the Imperial Army, Navy, Mechanicus and Titan legions make a beeline straight for Terra. The Emperor and his loyalists find themselves outmaneuvered and outgunned by the sudden treachery and are quickly besieged by Horus's combined fleets and armies and so make a desperate boarding action against Horus's flagship. Alongside the 9th Primarch Sanguinus and the 7th Primarch Rogal Dawn and a host of companies of marines and the Emperor's elite bodyguards, the Adeptus Custodes. However, upon teleporting aboard, they are scattered, and so Sanguinus, the ninth Primarch, and Horus's old friend find each other first. Sanguinus, already injured, fighting a greater demon, a bloodthirster. Sanguinus finds Horus swollen with all the power the Dark Gods can bestow, and he kills Sanguinus before the Emperor arrives. And so Sanguinus is depicted as the broken angel between the Emperor and Horus in their final duel. Horus and the Emperor fight, and the Emperor kills Horus, but is mortally wounded in turn, and then is placed on a huge life support machine called the Golden Throne. The Emperor from his deathless state is now fully preoccupied psychically, no longer able to focus on the real physical world, his mighty unfettered psychic power is cast into the warp, wrestling with demons and the chaos gods, while simultaneously keeping the psychic beacon of the Astronomicon lit. But to do so, psychers who didn't make the grade are wired into the machinery of the Astronomicon and agonizingly leached of their lives, the beacon, essentially, is a sustained death scream and a thousand more psychers daily are plugged into the machinery of the golden throne and their essence consumed by the emperor so that he doesn't truly die over the decades and centuries the loyal primarchs who could have taken the reins disappear from the universe all either mia wounded and in stasis or KIA, and the traitor Primarchs ascend to demonhood, trading their souls for an immortal eternity as mere extensions of their patron gods. And so, the High Lords of Terror are formed. Twelve humans who interpret the will of the Emperor, corrupt politicians, out for themselves. And so, religion slips back into the narrative. Humans begin to worship the Emperor as a god proper. This is understandable. After all, 
He is a being with colossal power, fighting to protect humans against the dark gods from beyond the grave, and the only thing allowing travel and communication between planets, and is sustained by daily human sacrifice of a thousand souls. And this religion, this church, called the Ecclesiarchy, or Ministorum, maneuvers itself into power, preaching the Holy Word as written in the Lectitito Divinitatis, this, the book having been, ironically, written by Lorgar when he still believed in the Emperor as a god. After the loss of the Emperor and his Primarchs, and the knowledge that demons are real and out to get you, the Imperium, already ravaged by civil war, regresses into the besieged Star Empire of the 41st millennium, fueled by superstition and fear, a brutal religious doctrine with extremist fundamentalist traits, rampant xenophobia, and a huge, unwieldy, technologically and eth ethically regressive bureaucratic and religious totalitarian dictatorship. Whew. And by and large, this state of affairs continues right up until the ending days of the 41st millennium. The Imperium, surrounded, endlessly fighting, grimly holding on because there is no other option. The clock paused at one minute to midnight. But that was in previous editions. The law has moved on now. And the clock previously paused at a minute to midnight. Well, now the second hand has started ticking. Abaddon the Despoiler, Chaos Champion, a space marine from the ancient days of the Horus Heresy, for centuries has been leading black crusades against the Imperium and achieves his goal. Raiding from the warp storm known as the Eye of Terror, from whence each of his black crusades came, he finally shatters the vital Imperial Bastion world of Cadia, destroying the mysterious pylons that dot its surface that formerly calmed the warp around the Eye of Terror and stabilized warp roots. With Cadia's destruction, the galaxy is split in two as all warp storms from galactic east to west, from the Eye of Terror to the Hadex Anomaly, are linked into one massive warp real space overlay called the Cicatrix Maledictum. Whole star systems were completely swallowed into that hell dimension and battle fleets were thrown hopelessly off course. Reinforcements to hundreds of war fronts lost and some fleets arrived at their destination to find that the war they had been sent to fight ended centuries ago or had yet to start as the very fabric of space-time was frayed. The traitor demon Primarchs are once again active in the galaxy, particularly Mortarion and Magnus the Red, and many safe systems in the Imperium are suddenly desperate war fronts as the Cicatrix Maledictum spews out chaos fleets, Orc Wars, Tyranid Hive fleets, and worse. Across the Imperium, it is forbidden to even look up at the night sky as the Cicatrix Maledictum can be seen as a livid purple scar across the sky and merely looking into it can send a person insane or spontaneously develop psychic powers and instances of psychic awakening are rampant as are tales of demonic incursion. And that's in the south the side of the Great Warp Scar, where the light of the Astronomicon can still be seen and astropathic messages can still be sent. To the north, nothing. No response, no communicable messages in or out. No returning ships, silence. The other side of the rift becomes known as the Dark Imperium. There is 
but one hope as the 41st millennium comes to a close. The loyalist Primarch of the 13th Legion, Robute Gilliman, in stasis, wounded for millennia, is awakened by the tech priest Belisarius' call and the Imperial Saint Celestine and their Eldar allies. Robut Gulliman fights his way to terror at the head of a crusade fleet and goes alone into the Emperor's chamber and emerges a day later with a renewed determination. Holding the Emperor's sword, he declares himself Imperial Regent and promptly puts the High Lords in their place, orders Belisarius' call to reinforce the Imperium with his new advanced Primaris Marines and leaves to start the Indomitus Crusade into the Dark Imperium. And so humanity has to come to terms with the fact that there are no more shield worlds, no defined war fronts. The galaxy has become irrevocably changed and a dark era becomes that much darker. That's it for this video. If you like this video, then please like, comment and subscribe. And if you didn't, then no bother. Till next time, ta -ra.